Welcome to episode 25 of Friends of Film, a podcast where we talk the latest movie news and theatrical releases. I'm your host, Cooper Hood, at Coops underscore Hoops on Twitter, and as always, I'm joined by my host, Josh Straley, at Straley Strong on Twitter. If you've not done so already on the show, you can follow or subscribe to the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube by simply searching Friends in Film. Josh? twenty Episode 25. Yeah. doesn't feel like we've been doing it this long. Next week will be halfway to a year. Wow. Crazy enough. That is awesome. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is a great time to give us some uh, feedback on how everything's going, yeah. I think. You know, we've been doing this for quite a while now, it seems like. So um, if you're enjoying it, uh, let us know what you are enjoying. If you aren't enjoying it for some reason, let us know why you're not, and we will do our best to fix that so you can enjoy it. But don't be too mean. Yeah, you know, just... <laughs> I just don't want anybody to write in the comments, uh, lose that co-host, Josh. <laughs> yeah, come on, guys. But dude, Be what's, nice. What's happening with you, man? Um, Nothing, really. I mean, I've been I've been sick the uh, last, like, uh, four days or so. Mm-hmm. So, ah. uh, still a little under the weather now. My voice might sound a little funny. Um, my nose is clogged up at the moment right now. Um, but I uh, still got to see a bunch of movies, so it's always nice. Yeah, like a marathon during your uh, downtime? Yeah, basically. Um... I mean, I watched. What'd you get through? Okay, I will. I will pull up the list of every movie I watched. Um, Ooh, here we go. Edge of Tomorrow, Zootopia, Finding Nemo, Get a Job, Jane Got a Gun, Goosebumps, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, Short Term Twelve, Anchorman One, Back to the Future, Begin Again, Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping, Finding Dory. Uh, then today, the theory of everything in Prometheus. Oh, that's a it's a great list. Yeah, um, very wide ranging. Jane got a gun. I never saw that. Good, bad. It's okay. Yeah. It's uh, I know if you want to like get into like Jane got a gun, go look at all the changes that went into this movie before it even started produ- production. It had went through like four directors, yeah. seven leads, or something like. It's insane. This movie got made. So with what they ended up doing. Um, maybe don't go like the title isn't very telling of what like it's not a Natalie Portman like shoot 'em up. Sure, it's uh it's very different than what I was expecting, but it's still it's still it's fine. Yeah, awesome. But, yeah, um, I was I was still glad to see Funny Dory though. Oh yeah, absolutely. Which is uh, what we're going to be reviewing this week. Um, but before we do so, we are going to talk about uh, some news that dropped this week. Not a lot, but still enough to talk about. Um, so, uh, if you want to go straight to our view, you can fast forward about half of the episode, or I will put the timestamp in the description for SoundCloud and iTunes listeners, hopefully. Uh, but if you're on YouTube, there'll be a pop-up on your screen that you can just click and skip right ahead. However, we hope you stick around. Please and stay. We're going to start with the flyby and Evan Peters told the rap that he wants Quicksilver and Deadpool to be in a team-up movie. <laughs> so, wow. I, I want that instantly. Yes. Who doesn't want that? Uh, that, those, that just seems like the best those, idea. Those are arguably the two best characters the X-Men have got right now. Yeah. I mean, but outside of you know, Hugh Jackman and Wolverine, I mean, those sure. two are probably my favorite in the current, all their movies. Absolutely. Um, and then... Helen Mirren uh, told Elle that she is going to be in fa- in Furious Eight. I'm still not sure if that's the actual title or not, but that's what I'm going with. I don't, yeah, see, I never know. Like, I always like to think of Fast and Furious like our Soul Brothers, you know, because they're like F and F two. Yeah, because that's our abbreviation. But that, that <laughs> Helen was not Mirren, intentional, by the way. Yeah, Helen Mirren is awesome, uh, and that's gonna be sweet to see her. Yeah, I, I mean, she's great. Uh, I, I mean, I. The last movie I probably saw her, I think, was Red. The, yeah, uh, same here. Uh, and she was she was great in that. Um, so looking forward to see what she can do in Furious Eight. I know there's been a lot of speculation that she could be maybe the Shaw mother of uh, Charlize Theron and Jason Statham's characters. Um, so that'd be pretty cool. Uh, um, that that really plays into the whole family rivalry thing yeah. too. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be um, awesome. And then we've talked a lot over the last couple of weeks about uh, the female Ocean's Eleven remake sequel. Sequel. It's a continuation yes. of Ocean's Remix. Eleven, according Remix. to the director. Um, and he told Slash Film that instead of it being titled Ocean's Ocha, like it was being floated around the last couple of weeks, mm-hmm. it's actually just going to be simply Ocean's Eight, which I like yeah. much better. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't flow as off, doesn't come off the tongue as you know awesome, but yeah. No, but I think it just 
it just flows with the franchise better. Sure. So you can do Oceans 8, 9, 10, the <gasps> original, uh, 11, 12, 13. That is clever. Yeah. Um, and then the final piece of the flyby is um, some sad news, but Lego Movie 2 has been pushed nine months to uh, winter 2019 release date. That's okay. Uh, that's kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, I, I loved the first one. Uh, it's has an insanely great uh, voice cast, um, but a lot of those characters are tied up in many other properties right now, um, and we still have Lego Batman coming out exactly. next year, and I think there's a Ninjago movie or something. Some other leg, some other Lego property, oh, awesome. Ninja something. <laughs> I don't know. It's coming out yeah. like the year after, so and yeah, enough. Knowing that they want to get everybody back, including Phil Lord and Chris Miller yeah. to help produce, uh, that that make that makes it worth the wait. Exactly. Um, and then some of our you know main news stories of the week. Uh, we got our first teaser trailer for Mona, uh, the next Disney animated film uh, comes out in November. Uh, stars Dwayne the Rock Johnson and. I thought he he was like great in the trailer. I mean, he's an animated person, but like his voice fit perfectly. The Rock is because, I I love The Rock. I didn't I didn't before because I thought he was just like a Vin Diesel, you know, type guy. But Vin mm-hmm. Diesel's gotten way better too. Like like these guys that you don't think were like great actors, they're just like action hero stars. They're becoming like some of my favorite people. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and just like the trailer of itself is doesn't show much because this just teaser just kind of introduces introduces mm-hmm. you to uh, his character, uh, who is shoot I forgot his name. He, I don't uh, know his name, but he's a demigod. Uh, I didn't bother learning his name. I kept trying to learn um, Moana's yeah actress's name, and it was uh, uh, Ali I'll- Cravalo. Yeah. Sound right? Yeah. I, I guess, yeah. Um, <laughs> I totally forgot. Yeah, his name's Maui. Yeah. Because I was like, I know it's someone with Hawaii. Um, but, I mean, I think both of them, I mean, just the animation style looks, like, beautiful. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this film. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be another Disney hit. <laughs> and music's going to be done. Some of the music is being done by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yes. Uh, I love that, too. So, yeah. Yep. Ready for a trailer. And uh, we got our second trailer for Pete's Dragon, the next Disney live action uh, adaptation. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, Taking the cartoon and turning it into something that I actually want to see, like, as a 20-year-old guy. So I mean, like, the first, like, trailer, teaser, or whatever, like... Didn't really get me that excited for it just because it, like, Mm -hmm. didn't really tell me much about the story. Didn't show me the dragon. He... He just looks like a big flying dog, and he, I mean, he looks adorable. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the cast surrounding the movies uh, off the chains. So Bryce Dallas Howard, Robert Redford, Carl Urban. Um, am I missing anybody? That's you know um, high profile. I, th- I think there's a couple others, but yeah. yeah, that's that. Those are the main ones. But those three names right off the top. Like Robert Redford's in it. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait. Totally. I mean, it it. It looks like it's going to have those cute moments, but it can be some pretty intense, I think. Yeah. It, uh, it's going to have a stiff competition that week, that in Sausage Party. Uh, It'll be an interesting <laughs> dynamic to see which one uh, I know which, which one, one wins seeing, out. Um, moving on to the Transformers franchise uh, that everybody loves, uh, Joe Blow has reported um, some new plot details for the movie. Um and just to go, there's a lot of them. Uh, they did the YouTube video to kind of release all this stuff. But what they report is uh, Optimus Prime at the end of Transformers Age of Extinction uh, leaves Earth. And when he does, he finds his home planet of Cybertron, which he learns he's responsible for killing. And um, in that learning, he um, finds out that he can actually bring it back to life somehow using an artifact that is coincidentally on earth, just like everything else related to the transformers. Yeah. Of course. Um, <laughs> they say, quote, the artifact ties into Merlin, the magician of King Arthur lore. So apparently the power of magic was given to Merlin by none other than a transformer. That's pretty weird. Um, and they kind of put that and the title of the last night together with the logo of the sword mm-hmm. to say that, 
that artifact is probably the Excalibur, the sword of the sword yeah. of the stone. Um, and then they also say Bumblebee is now the leader of the Transformers because Optimus Prime is gone, and that these other Transformers named Hound, Crosshairs, and Drift are going to return. I I don't remember who they are because yeah. I don't remember <laughs> I what Transformers say, for. I'm just nodding and smiling um, over here. Yeah. But if going. you liked, if you wanted to see the Dinobots a lot more, they are going to be back as well as many Dinobots. Um, and there's going to be a few other new Transformers. One English. One's going to be a moped, and uh, one is going to be called uh, the Creator, uh, who has like ties to how the Transformers came to be. Apparently, you think that's Sir Anthony Hopkins? Is that makes a sense. Character? I mean, I think he kind of has that gravitas that you'd want with like the Creator. Does he's, already, he's already Odin. Yeah, I mean, he might as well just <laughs> go over and very, create the Transformers. He has a very authoritarian voice. Well, yeah, I think I need I just need to go watch these movies. I think I've said that like a thousand times on this podcast, but I, I, just so I can get what we're talking about. Have you here. seen any of them? Not a no, single one. Wow. And I, okay. was, I was dying to see the first one. The first one is good. Okay. I will, the, uh, the first one is very good. The uh, third one is enjoyable. Um, second one is just uh, fine, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, fourth one uh, is it's not good, but it's not necessarily the worst I, thing. I've on seen Earth. I've seen one scene from it, and it's just this totally I don't know if it's out of place, but this Budweiser thing where yeah. it comes crashing through it, and then Mark Wahlberg randomly grabs one and drinks yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Product um, placement is all over the place in those movies. Oh, I mean, I mean, yeah, Chevy is heavily in throughout. Yeah. All that. And, yeah, I mean, any time a transformer rolls up in that, it get, you get a two-second still shot of the logo oh, of the car. She's like, "Go buy this car because <laughs> it's this is what Bumblebee is now." Um, See, so yeah, I don't know; these plot deals don't make me any more excited for the movie. Um, oh, I will say, Bumblebee's Camaro that he's they really released images of it. Uh-huh. It does look it awesome. does look good, um, but having. Like the Transformers be connected to the extinction of dinosaurs and now magic on Earth. It just, it's just uh, a little weird. <laughs> There's, yeah. I like to see them kind of explore the rest of the, like, I don't know, the galaxy. For sure. Um, but a, another franchise that we might begin to a return to is the Shrek franchise because um, NBC Universal chief Steve Burke. Um, says that the Shrek franchise will continue in some form now that uh, Universal has been bought by Comcast um, and mm-hmm. that they're open to either a sequel, uh, which would be a Shrek 5, um, or a straight-up reboot uh, for the franchise. Haven't we had enough Shrek? I have. I, 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 I didn't even see the last one. Cause it's, it's it's good. Is it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's Shrek. It, you, you're like, I shouldn't like this. Oh, but that was really funny. And, okay. you know, and I, I I enjoyed it. But I've always been like, oh, this has always just kind of felt too little kiddish for me. I don't know. Like, it didn't have a broad audience of people, yeah. I thought. Uh, <sighs> I mean, I liked, I haven't watched the Shrek movies in forever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I don't care for another Shrek movie. I don't need one. Um I'm not sure you can get the whole cast back together to do another one. That's probably why a reboot's um, more. But I don't real. And then if you're going to reboot the franchise and just like it's still going to have to be a kind of similar story. Like how many different stories can you tell with Shrek? Yeah. Like maybe they can do like a time uh, travel. <laughs> didn't they already do that with the fourth one? It was like yeah, time well, travel reset the universe or alternate something. Alternate reality actually. Yeah, so I I don't know. I think the bigger story out of all this though is um from deadline it was that dreamworks wants to get to four movies a year did you catch that i don't see that i didn't read the that that, that blew me away like disney's disney pixar's just finally getting to two yeah but then i mean that's just pixar they still have like disney animation which sure. did zootopia and then mona uh, mm-hmm. which comes out so that's four plus the live action stuff um so that would be that would be uh, I don't know about that, especially if they're all like minion movies. Sure. I don't, <laughs> I don't need any. I don't more even minions. think. I don't even think it's DreamWorks. The minions mm-hmm. are they, are they DreamWorks? Yeah. Oh, I always thought they were like at Sony. No. What if Sony doesn't have anything then? Wow. Glad you have the chance of meatballs. 
Sure. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, a. <laughs> it's another. <laughs> I don't care for that. Um, uh, probably the one of the more exciting pieces of news uh, for me this week uh, is Zac Efron, according to Variety, is going to or is in talks to join The Greatest Showman, uh, which is a biopic um, based off famous uh, circus leader B.T. Barnum, um, who is going to be played by Hugh Jackman in the film, um, and then. Because it's you know the Barnum and Bailey the Ringling Brothers story, yeah, it's probably going to be the Efron is going to be playing the other one, James Anthony Bailey, um, and that it, I mean it's going to be a musical from what it sounds like. Yeah, um, Hugh Jackman uh, has musical talents. Efron obviously is done previous musical stuff with yeah. High School Musical. <laughs> I, I think you know him from some. And this. I I would love to see Efron and Jackman together for this, um, number one. And number two, it just gets Efron one step closer to maybe uh, joining Pitch Perfect 3 like I want. Oh, man. Dude, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. Uh, This is – I hope this becomes the case. It pretty much sounds like it will be just dot some I's and cross some T's. Yeah, probably. I mean, I I don't read anything other than the Variety Report. Um, Yeah. So he's just in talks at the moment. It's not confirmed. Yeah. but the movie was originally supposed to come out th- at the end of this year, mm-hmm. got pushed because uh, of production trouble. Um, so it'll come out next year at some point. With it being a musical too, I hope there's like a lightheartedness to this story. And it's just about, you know, so if Hugh Jackman is in like Eddie Eagle fun form and yeah. Zac Efron is just, you know, Zac Efron these last mm-hmm. four years, like he's been doing, uh, that, that could be a really great movie. Yeah. I uh, I was I'm looking forward to this whenever it does end up coming out, um, and I mean, if you have Efron and Jackman, the rest of the cast are gonna get. I mean, I don't know the rest of the people you need for a circus, mm-hmm. um, and the rest of the supporting characters of the Ringling Brothers, um, Enterprise, but I'm sure they're gonna get some top tier uh, talent. I agree totally. Um, and then the only real bit of superhero move superhero news we have this week um besides like apparently the day you guys are listening to this uh there's going to be some justice league uh details that drop or something Ooh. because press or uh, set visits have been happening the last couple of days yeah. in london and now on today if you guys are listening to this for us it's three days away um but there's going to be something that drops quick um, we need to speculate on what that could be uh <laughs> cast photo together cast photo and they're announcing two more super villains that are going to be in the movie yeah and it's going to be uh a nazi <laughs> super powered cyborg and i don't know any justice league villains <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're trying to pitch <laughs> i don't know either um i yeah I, i'm guessing it's probably just going to be like a shot of all of them in the costumes together or something like hey we're going to be at comic-con <laughs> that would be rad too um because we also know that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be at Comic Con, and they're going to show a teaser apparently, but they're not going to show it online, according to James Gunn. Oh, okay. Which is sad, but it'll probably leak, and if it does, nobody we'll talk leak about it. it. Yeah, but oh, nobody leak it, I, even though I want. I want to I see, it. see it in high definition, not yeah, <laughs> shaky absolutely. cam. And I wanted I wanted to see on Gunn's time. Because yeah. You, respect the conference. Yeah. Um. But anyways, the uh bit of news we're here to talk about is uh, Spider-Man Homecoming has been expanding their cast over the last uh, week um, with three new members have joined. Um, THR revealed two of them, one being Donald Glover um, joining an unknown role, and then Logan Marshall Green um, has been cast uh, in a villainous role. Um, and then Deadline also revealed that uh, Martin Starr, um, is joining as well in an unknown role. Um, so Donald Glover is the most exciting one of these, I think just because of the, if you don't know the history of Glover and Spider-Man, he voices Miles Morales on the animated series. Mm-hmm. Um, and prior to Andrew Garfield getting the gig, uh, in 2012, yep. uh, Glover campaigned really hard to play Miles Morales on the big screen and be the face of the reboot. Um, which would have been awesome. They did ended up obviously not going that direction. Um, and while he's probably not going to play Miles in this movie, um, having him be a part of the Spider-Man 
franchise anyways is pretty cool. Oh, totally. Um, I almost wonder what his role is going to be because Donald Glover is a bit, pretty big name, I think. Yeah. So you're, he's not just going to be a, oh, look, it's Donald Glover in the background. or Yeah, I hope not. Yeah, or just a random cameo. Yeah, so. I th- I, there's been uh, speculation that he could be like um, Randy Robertson uh, or Robbie Robertson uh, who work at the Daily Bugle, kind of like underneath uh, J. Jonah Jameson and kind of be the supervisor to Peter. Um, I think that'd be great if he's like a kind of... Because in the, in the comics, the way Miles becomes Spider-Man is... Peter dies and then Miles sees that and he takes up uh, the suit in honor of him Mm -hmm. Um, and they have Peter has this mentor relationship to Miles and I I think it'd be very cool to see it kind of flipped where even though he's not playing Miles people still can be like oh that's the guy who was almost Miles right have him be the mentor to Peter maybe not have to know about the secret like that he's actually the superhero but he he might actually like know yeah um but I think something like that where he's the mentor to Tom Holland's Peter Parker would be awesome. For sure. I think, yeah. And, and Don, I mean, yeah, especially for, for the series going forward. Um, Martin Starr, love that dude in Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. He is he's he is absolutely hilarious. Any chance he's the tinkerer we've been hearing about? Because I feel like he fits that description. I think he fits the description of tinkerer as well. But I think that's actually Logan Marshall Green. Okay. Because he was described as the villain, or in a villain that would help out Michael Keaton, mm-hmm. um, and there was no details given about Star's character. Even though I think he looks and like would feel more like the Tinkerer. Yeah. Uh, since Logan Marshall Green is the only person being described as a villain, I think he is the front runner to be Tinkerer at the moment, unless they're going to be like a young version of like Norman Osborn or something. Um, Oh, which wow, would be really yeah. young, but I mean, he kind of, he kind of, he kind of has that like businessman look to him. Totally. Um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I would say he's probably the tinkerer. I wrote such on mcuexchange.com. dot um, but yeah, I'm excited for him to join. Um, I just watched him in Prometheus, obviously, as I said earlier. I uh, liked what he did there. And Martin Starr, a little uh, little Easter egg for everybody. He's actually already in the MCU. As well, he is uh, in The Incredible Hulk uh, when Banner's at Culver University, um. and uh, he is uh, trying to figure out, uh, uh, he's trying to get the data for Betty Ross, and he goes in the computer lab with the pizza, and there's a guy in there, that's Martin Starr. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember The Incredible Hulk. It's yeah, it's not, it's good. Really? I, I enjoy that one. Okay. I can remember, I can see, I've seen the final battle. And that's where he jumps out of the helicopter and mm-hmm. fights Abomination. Yeah. In Har- is it Harlem? Yeah, in New yeah. York. So I'll, I'll need to revisit that. But was it like a, was he like a comedic relief? Or I mean, he's, like he, he's in it for like two shots maybe. He, okay. They show a shot of him like early on and then like Bruce gives him pizza to let him into the uh, computer lab and then he's like <laughs> holding up the pizza and smiling yeah. and waving. Uh, just okay. like really goofy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Martin Starr will be... I don't know, a teacher, maybe? I don't know. A fellow reporter? uh, I don't know. He could be a multitude of things. Um, But uh, that's it for the news. Uh, There's there's hardly anything to talk about, really. Um, And uh, so now we're going to talk about Funny Dory, Mm -hmm. uh, because that's the only thing we have to do today. Yeah. Um, Nobody sent us in questions. I don't know why you guys don't. We'd love to hear from you. Um, answer any questions you guys have or theories just any anything just throw them all in um, but yeah uh, Finding Dory the latest Pixar film 13 years after the original uh, Finding Nemo uh, was it worth the wait Josh? Absolutely it was worth the wait um, I had, hadn't seen Finding Nemo forever until the first trailer came out and I was like alright I gotta revisit this and I remembered I like only remember. I'm still wowed at looking at the 2003 Finding Nemo and looking at the whole underwater environment. Yeah, that it is fantastic. And then when I sat down and watched this uh, sequel 13 years later, I was still blown away at how better Pixar, how much, how much they improved just visually, um, everything in the film. And then I mean, just getting into the story, like 
it was it was super cliche calling it Finding Dory. Like I called it, yeah. I said, you know, they're gonna call it a sequel, Finding Dory, back in two thousand five, and when they actually did, I was like, eh, okay, whatever. But the whole story was incredible. Like from the very beginning, I was like, oh, I kind of like fell in love with like little Dory and uh, like her story. Like that was perfectly legit. Um, and then like you know how it kind of they used that to her remembering things sporadically to drive the entire plot of the film. And then uh, leading up to like the nature reserve and all that I thought was um, phenomenal. The cast throughout the movie um, voice acting from Ellen uh, was uh, fabulous. Albert Brooks, Ed O'Neill as Hank, probably my favorite performance throughout the entire <laughs> movie. Cause he was so good. I, I didn't know Idris Elba had ever joined this thing. Yeah, me neither. Let alone Dominic West, because yeah. they were both in The Wire. And when they <laughs> cameo together as the, the sea lions, I thought it was uh, fantastic. Um, there was the, the I had not seen a more delightful movie this year than Finding Dory. Because it it tackles such great kind of kind of actually somewhat depressing themes Mm -hmm. but you never get super sad about it because you're like oh well these people still have a great attitude about it and it's kind of like trying to teach that lesson um it was scored phenomenally well uh thomas newman does that sound right yes uh he did an awesome job on the soundtrack um i loved that they didn't take characters from the first movie Mm-hmm. And then just riff off them in like a different way. The only returning characters outside of, you know, uh, Nemo, Marlin, and Dory were, yeah. Uh, yeah, Crush. Crush. And Squirt. And Squirt. And uh, Mr. Ray. Yeah, that and was I about it. The, uh, it was the, the, the original the, schoolmates. The, the, yeah, that was it. And I, I love that. They didn't try to like play too much off of the past film. And it stands by itself almost without needing finding Nemo at all other than you know you have that really ability to mm-hmm. Dory so I just I just absolutely loved it it's one of the best sequels that Pixar has probably made outside of the Toy Story franchise which is yeah. bar none the best animated trilogy ever mm-hmm. so uh overall I gave it four out of five ticket stubs okay at some points um the uh, Dory's flashbacks kind of kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop yeah. throughout the movie. And I was like, well, you could have gotten that all the way at the beginning, but I mean, that was really all my super only big complaint of everything. All right. Um, I'm a little surprised you went for because you were kind of like raving about it. Yeah. Um, a couple, uh, the whole them being on land at the very end, I did kind of not like near the, like uh-huh. okay, I loved I loved Hank driving the truck like the truck through like downtown. Right, yeah, that was great and all, but I was like, eh, this sort of feels like um, Madagascar. Just it was <laughs> it just felt like little... it felt like Toy Story two race to the airport. Yes, it's yeah, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Um. Anyways, um, uh, my uh, general thoughts uh was I enjoyed it. It was um. I didn't have super high expectations for this movie. Um, I didn't think it was a necessary sequel. I wasn't dying to see the origin of Dory or Mm -hmm. the continuation of her story. Um, But it's definitely not like I would still recommend people see it. I mean, I I mean, it's going to make, it's already going to make a buttload of money at the box office this weekend. Um, It has the typical like Pixar framework for a movie. You know, it's super sad at the beginning it has the heart, and at the end, it all kind of wraps up nicely. You kind of learn a little bit of a life lesson. Um, mm-hmm. It's not as good as the first one, um, which is, I mean, kind of hard to say. I mean, I think Finding, Finding Nemo is one of the the best Pixar films. I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's in the top half. Um, definitely, but definitely. I mean, Pixar has a stacked list of the top anyways, so it's hard to <laughs> say it's one of like mm-hmm. their top five. Um, but, I mean, this movie does kind of... I was afraid that it would be very similar to the first one, and at points it kind of is. Um, just, I mean, because it is... I mean, it's 
it's instead of you know Marlon trying to find Nemo, it's Dory trying to find her parents. It's just kind of flip flop the stories, and you're following Dory and Hank, and then you're uh, instead of like Nemo and the uh, aquarium pals in the first one, and then you're following Marlon and Nemo trying to find Dory, as opposed to in the first one it's Marlon and uh, Dory. Um, so. It is a bit similar. I was a little afraid that Dory would be too annoying as the as like the main character. Yeah. Um, and I think if they didn't have like somebody like Hank or Bailey or Destiny or any like any of those other side characters to help play off of her, I wouldn't be able to handle it. Like if it was like Dory only, I I wouldn't have liked that. I don't think just because it would have been too much overload of. Oh hi, Darty asked that. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like okay. that would have, that would have happened every minute and I would have gotten annoyed. Um, but I mean, they're like, I just said, there's all those new characters are well earned and they're very enjoyable to watch. Um, but it's like watching it. There's not like those, like with, with Pixar, they've developed over the years, this sense of like, this is going to be like one of the best movies you've seen the, of the year. And one of the best animated films. Mm -hmm. It looks great. But I think in terms of just like overall impact and everything. It didn't have like the emotional impact of like a Toy Story 3 or Up. um, Or like Inside Out for me. Like I loved Inside Out last year. Oh totally. Um, And then like thinking after like this movie ended. I was like thinking I was like. You know Inside Out was really good last year. And then you look like Good Dinosaur. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was okay. I didn't see Good Dinosaur. And I think Finding Dory is kind of around there. It's it's not bad, um, and it's still enjoyable. Um, but I think there's I don't even know what else you could do. I, cause I just I just can't think of a story that needed to be told with Dory. Um, so overall, I'm going to give it three and a half ticket stubs out of five. Hmm. Okay. Um, what did you think of, I mean, like if you had to give good dinosaur ticket stubs, what would you have given it? I know that's on the spot. About the same, about About three and a half or three probably. Um, just cause I, I, it's kind of the same. Like I didn't really like connect with the story in good dinosaur. Um, whereas this one, like I was, like you said, like it's kind of overly depressing throughout like the story. But yeah, you don't actually like ever like feel sad because they have like a ba- they have like a good attitude about it. But like other than like Dory, everybody has like pretty sour attitudes. Like Hank's like, "All right, I'm gonna do this for you so I can get your so I can get your stupid uh your tag so I can leave forever and never be bothered by people again." And then like Marlin's all like, "Just go forget. It's what you're best at." And then like he's all sad the rest of the movie. Well, that's Marlin and Hank. And then it like. <laughs> Like that's like those are like outside of Dory, those are like the two biggest characters in the movie. Uh, but like um, Destiny and Bailey, like they're or yeah. They, I mean Bailey was a little bit yeah. Uh, At first he was like sure. Oh my my echolocation doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like Bailey was pretty peppy about the whole thing and. Oh yeah, I mean I love I love Bailey absolutely. Bailey was probably my favorite new character, uh, just because he, he was super funny. Uh, his like him being like down on himself about the echolocation. And mm-hmm. then like, once it starts working, he starts freaking out. He's like, it's working. Yeah. It's working. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, and it's just super funny. And like, he like has all these super, like he, he thinks, he thinks he has super high. He's like, can you guys see this? Oh wait, of course you guys can. Yeah. It's, so I think, and like Ty Burrell did a great job voicing him. Um, and then destiny was great as well. Uh, Caitlin Olson, um, from always sunny Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know that until afterwards. So I was it, like, Oh, that was like her performance. Maybe wanted to go see the, yeah. go watch the series now, which I didn't think was ever going to be possible, but, uh, yeah. I mean, are we kind of in like the spoiler really yeah. area? Yeah. All right. I mean, did you think the movie was like pretty funny overall? Um, I mean, I definitely laughed um, at points. I think the funniest moment for me was anytime Gerald tried to get up on the rock, yeah, and then you get pushed off by <laughs> yes. uh, by <laughs> yes. uh, by uh, Fluke yes. and Rudder. That I was I laughed every time, oh. uh, even though it was shown in like the trailers and stuff. Yeah. Like, I, like you knew it was coming. 
Gerald is the ugliest otter I've ever <laughs> seen. Like his creepy unibrow. He looks he looks so weird. Uh, and then like uh, what was uh, what's the bird Gretchen? Uh, or, yeah, yes. Yeah, I think like the freaky yes. red eyed bird Gretchen. Like she freaked me out. I was like, ugh, I don't like her. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the part that made me laugh probably the most outside of that, um, the cuddling otters at the very okay, end. Totally. When they all climbed up and they're like cuddle time and they all cuddle and it just like i started just laughing hysterically <laughs> yeah. in theater uh i was i think i was like the only one um at that point yeah um but that was really really funny okay the otters and the um and the shoot walruses otters uh, otters and what's idris Elba's animal again oh Luke seals seals thank you those the, those are those are two and three but I la- I just lost it when you, you get the like the pan shot of the entire uh, aquarium not aquarium yeah the aquarium nature aquatic reserve and then you know like hello I'm Sigourney Weaver yes yeah when like and, when Sigourney Weaver started speaking I was like what's happening yes. I was like I was like what is she like is Sigourney Weaver actually going to be there and I was like mm-hmm. that was that was in my notes that was uh, like. That was that was the perfect I, like use of like Sigourney Weaver. I like you know I've been you know you chuck I chuckle throughout the movie and laugh and all that jazz and then I just I completely lost it. I mean, there's not any like alien joke there, isn't it? It's about her like no. her documentarying planet Earth. That's yeah, it's, kind, it was like, just like that's why I was just like that's it was so just funny because awesome. it was like, <laughs> hi, I'm Sigourney Weaver, and, and like Dory's like hi Sigourney Weaver, and I was like what? <laughs> what is happening? Like how does Sigourney Weaver go to factor into the story? I was mm-hmm. like. Oh, like that's pretty smart. And they keep bringing her up throughout the entire yeah. movie. Yeah, my friend Sigourney Weaver's helping me. <laughs> like, uh, and then, uh, yeah, that was that was by it was by far the most unexpected thing to happen in this movie, and that just made me totally lose it. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I was talking earlier about kind of like those like those Pixar moments where you're just like either mm-hmm. like your heart's like broken for the characters, or like you're just like laughing uncontrollably you're just like super happy for what's happening totally. and like the happiest moment f- like you know i didn't expect to like enjoy it that much it's like when dory reunites with her parents at like like 20 minutes towards the end of the film they mm-hmm. like embrace her they're like hugging and everything like i just couldn't help but smile because i was just like they're freaking out they're like oh my gosh you're back and everything and like that's like the pixar stuff that i wanted throughout the whole thing like that's the kind of like put at the heartstring stuff i wanted yeah um, and that that part in particular was executed um tremendously totally it, it, like they said they set it up so well too um it's diane keaton and eugene levy like i i first of all love both of them and anything they act in but like you you really think like oh man these these are great parents at the start of the movie and then you feel bad for them when they lose dory more than you feel bad for dory losing her parents Oh, okay, maybe equal, but I think I, f- I felt more bad for them. And then when they, like, we can set, like, at no, the No, I felt way more bad for Dory. Really? Yeah, because she's just, like, she's just big-eyed Dory, yeah, little okay, body, just, sure. like, going, can you help me find my parents? Well, where are they? I don't remember. <laughs> Who are you? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I forget things. And then people just kept leaving her and leaving her and leaving her. I was like, oh, this, this is sad. Okay, yeah. Uh, but, but, like, there's there's immense emotional payoff, I think, from the very beginning, and then, like you said, at the very end, that last 20 minutes. Yeah. I thought. I'll argue with you about who you care for most, but. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any other? Uh, Man, I, yeah, I, there's not a whole lot to really dive no, there, into. There's not. A ton. I kind of, I think I kind of like I let, shouted it all out in my opening my, my monologue there, but it's just, I, I really think Hank stole the show, though, like visually yeah him constantly changing and reflecting with the environments i was was genius absolutely and i get, allegedly they wanted him in the first movie really yeah but i guess they didn't have the talent or the ability to oh, okay to make be able to do that so i don't know how that would interesting. work interesting uh yeah they had like it gave like the movie like a mission impossible vibe yeah definitely I loved that yeah like i want like a hank spy movie yeah totally which now that he's in the ocean like can't he really do he need but yeah it was, yeah, it, it, which kind of, which, oh, which I thought it walked the line so well throughout the middle half of the movie with him. And then at the end when he drives the car and everything, that's where I, it was just like, oh, too, too much Penguins Madagascar. Yeah. 
So, uh, cause that, that, that gag ran old when they did their own spinoff movie. Did you ever end up seeing that? Uh, shoot. Did I see that one? The penguins. Um, they were on like a boat, right? And, uh, that's yeah. all I really remember. That's about it. <laughs> That's all I they, can Well, they, think they of. basically join up with like a spy, like an animal spy team and start traveling the planet. Uh, maybe I didn't see it. All right. Well, yeah, it's not worth it. All right. Yeah, I don't think I even saw. How many? Have there been three Madagascar movies? There's, been th- there's three Madagascar movies and then the Penguin spinoff. Okay. I think I've seen the first two Madagascar. I didn't see the third one because I was the one with like, uh, they're like part of the circus mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't see that one. Um, but I mean, that's really all we have. Yeah, for... I mean, that's all I got to say. I love. I mean, I love the Idris Elba Dominic West cameo. That was still yeah. that was still one of the greatest things I was wasn't expecting. Yeah. Um. Um. I mean, we are uh, very short. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, like our duration of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um. So, is there anything you want to just like randomly talk about for like ten minutes? I can speculate more on my Justice League. <laughs> no. Or but um like it wasn't too much in rank the... Pixar movies on the spot. No, I have a list I already. I think um, I can do that. Okay. Would you go rattle off your first five and, Okay. Oh snap. I'm gonna need a list of Pixar films. I uh will get it real quick. Um Alright, so um my number one, um not uh, much of a. I mean, it, it's close, but Toy Story three, uh, for me, um, is the best Pixar movie. It has, um, the heart, and then waiting all that time after growing up watching Toy Story one and two as a child, and then seeing Toy Story three as a teenager, and like Andy being the same age as me, and like, you connect with like Andy and like but also his toys because like you're in that point where you're throwing stuff out because you're like mm-hmm. oh I'm too old for this junk and then like when they're about to like be incinerated you're like oh my gosh this is so sad <laughs> yes. like I I might cry right now in the theater Absolutely. Um, number two Toy Story the original um, I mean it started all, it started all off um, it's great um, and then uh, number three Inside Out um, like I said earlier it was one of my favorite movies of last year um, the voice cast is phenomenal. The message is, in, uh, is incredible. Um, the premise is so unique, uh, and fun and the way they kind of constructed like the brain and emotions or anything was, um, so cool to see play out. Um, and then number four is up. Um, one of the most emotional openings for a Pixar oh my movie. Goodness. Um, just the silent, you know, no talking cold play like of the story of like this love story and then just like the abrupt end you're just like oh my mm-hmm. gosh this sucks it, what is this movie going to be about and then it turns out to be like crazy adventure really fun mm-hmm. um and then number five is close i'm gonna give it to finding nemo um right now um even though the incredibles is close i haven't seen the incredibles in such a long time but i remember loving it as a it's, child it holds up um it holds up so just because i haven't seen it in a while and like i still like remember a lot of it but like i don't remember like besides like where's my <laughs> super suit yes yeah, like, like that's like the only like line i really remember mm-hmm. um sam jackson so just because like finding Nemo I've watched more recently I kind of remember it a little bit better sure I'm going to give that the slight edge over the Incredibles and that's my top five all right dude okay well okay your top five. Oh, I made a list of 10 oh okay well <laughs> number one I totally agree with you Toy Story 3 for every reason especially because it just the it happened at a point in my life where I felt like that. I think it was like 15, like when it went down and where I like sold all my Star Wars toys. Like it lined up so perfectly. And it's like, I kind of want those toys back. Right. <laughs> so that kind of explains why I went ballistic this year <laughs> with the new Star Wars merchandise. Um, number two, Inside Out. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. 
Number three is Toy Story 2. Okay. Which I thought, I because, uh, oh man, I don't know, like, just them actually being in the toy store and Mm -hmm. all, everything they have to do to play off that, and I don't know the guy's name, but the evil guy who's the collector. No, the collector of the toys. Oh, um, Al. Al. Yeah, Al Al Val's Toys Born. Thank you. He is, he is like... He still stands out as one of my favorite like creations of Pixar, like as a person, because he starts when, especially when he complains about gotta drive all the way to work on a Saturday, right. crosses the street, and it's just like, oh man, I relate to this guy. That's right. <laughs> and the whole the Cheeto situation. Yeah, like if I don't care if you hate Cheetos, if you watch that movie, you're gonna want to eat Cheetos mm-hmm. because like when he just has some laying everywhere, it's like, oh, those those are good. <laughs> yeah. I, I would eat those. Uh, maybe not off of him, but I would eat some cheese right now. <laughs> it's the, the 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 most disgusting part, like when he burps. Oh like, yeah, that whole that whole thing is like, oh, I'm I am disgusted along with Woody in that. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Um, number four, don't I can't mean, hear me out. Bugs Life. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, that's that was like the problem for me. Like I just I just don't remember it very well. But I can remember that this was it was I. The sh- uh, first of all, I love the animated short that came with it. Oh, sorry. Speaking of which, back to Dory. Uh, uh, Piper. Piper. Yes. Yeah, that was great. It yeah. was. Uh, it was almost more visually impressive than the movie itself. Like. Yeah. Holy moly! But yeah, Piper was great. My one, probably my favorite Pixar animated short. I think the the one with the the dog that eats all the food. Oh, um, that yeah. was with. What was it with? It wasn't Inside Out. Um, shoot, it was one of the more recent ones. Um, no, I can't remember which one it was with, but that one, uh, I I know what you're talking I about. Love I love that one because I I love I love dogs. Sure thing. Um, I love to eat, and uh, just watching like the dog's perspective of the heartbreak and mm-hmm. like the reuniting and everything was just wonderful. Totally. Um, and then so number five. I had struggled with this one, but I did put the Incredibles there. Okay. Because uh, I'm first of all stoked that they're we've got another one in the works. But yeah, not till 2019. Just, yeah, I I love I love I love I like superhero movies. I love them, and th- it was almost like superhero. It was almost like superhero satire in mm-hmm. cartoon form. Yeah. But it still it still made me think. Oh, this is kind of a superhero world I'd love to live in. Right. And then, like you said, Sam Jackson's "Honey, where's my super suit?" Yep, best line. And then the whole thing about you can't save somebody who didn't want to be saved. Yeah, <laughs> the whole thing that kicks off like the lawsuits. I love that. Yeah, uh, all all good choices. Um, is like, what are like, what's like, like. What is the Incredibles on like the ticket stub scale? Oh, easily. Ooh, ooh. Oh, man, four. I think give it a four and a half out of five ticket okay. stubs. I have it as a four right now. Which is yeah. that's just I haven't watched it in ten years, probably. Sure. Um, and then that is to say, everything above it is a straight five. Yeah, all of. Just so you know, Up and Finding Nemo are four point fives. Mm-hmm. Toy Story, Inside Out, and Toy Story three are all fives. Totally. Um, just incredible um on the spot worst one cars two brave really i did not like brave oh, i thought brave was one of those like points like, vi- visually i thought it was like one of those points you could point to in pixar where you can say oh they did they went a step up mm-hmm. i thought and then the, i mean the story wasn't i didn't identify with it a ton but i still thought it was good Especially, I just I just didn't like it. Like, really? It's not like it wasn't like oh, it's not one of Pixar's best. It's like no, it just wasn't good. Yeah. Okay. I would. Yeah. I, it was like it was like it was like Pixar trying to take over Disney Princess storytelling. Yeah. And then that's when they lies wisely went. You know what? Why don't we go ahead and just move this style to Disney animation? Yeah, they've had a lot and of success with that. I mean, Frozen. Yep. Frozen. Rapunzel, or no, Tangled, Tangled. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Tangled's great. Love Tangled. Beyond um, amazing, but that's it. Um, is this our shortest episode yet? Yeah, like under fifty. Nice. <laughs> right now, um, by the time we do outro and everything, we'll be over fifty. But still, I mean, that'll be mm-hmm. short. That's why we wanted your questions. Um, 
but yeah, there's, that's all we got. Uh, so during our time away, be sure to tell us your thoughts, everything we cover by tweeting us at friends and film, where you'll see updates on the podcast, movie news and more. You can follow me personally on Twitter at coops underscore hoops. And you can follow me, Josh at straightly strong. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, SoundCloud or iTunes, please subscribe, like share, or give us a thumbs up. And if you've liked what you heard, uh, be kind and give us a review on iTunes. Even if you're not listening on iTunes, just head over there real quick. Give us a review um, because that'd be great because then we can have a little five-star logo next to our uh, name so people will see and be like, hey, we should check these guys out because they mm-hmm. obviously have good reviews and people like them. So yeah. uh, I know people listen and who don't rev- who haven't given us a review yet, so <laughs> go do that because that'd be awesome. We'd really appreciate it. Um, but during our time away, thanks again for tuning into the Friends of Film podcast. Josh? The internet, thank you for stopping by. And be sure to watch some new movies before we return next week with a review of Independence Day Resurgence.